Welcome back to the School of Calisthenics. It's Tim and Jacko, and you have landed here because you have got tight hamstrings and you want some help of how to improve them. So we've pulled together some exercises which are going to do exactly that. It's not just a matter of doing loads of static stretching. We actually need to take a bit more of a fully rounded approach to this. So we're going to look at hip flexor tightness. We're going to look at hamstring tightness, how we can loosen those off. We're even going to get the glute involved in a little bit of balance to create some stability and some strength and range. It's not, it's, we've made it simple for you. Way more simple than what I may have made that sound. So we're going to go through a sequence of exercises now so you can sit back, relax, enjoy, and then put them into practice after you've watched the videos. I'd say what you will enjoy, not having tight hamstrings. Definitely. The hamstring, it's actually a group of four muscles, but we talk about it as one. And we're gonna use the box and the ball to get some pressure onto these because we can get some nice direct force down onto a muscle which sits pretty deep. And the trigger points particularly can be quite deep. So we need to get some weight on top of it. So Jacko positions the ball underneath his hamstrings and then he's just gonna find that trigger point having a hunt around. Again, you might find these jump out of the right away or get a bit sort of difficult to pin down. So just trap them, find a bit of a position where you can hold it in place and then start to work. The real, what I really like about this is we can be more active in this position. So we find the trigger point and then we start to work through. That's ultimately where we want to be, starting to get some full knee extension in that shape. And working that through is just going to start to strip out some of the tension in that muscle. Hamstrings can cause a big problem in the squat and up in our uh, single leg progressions by tucking the bum up underneath. And they can also start to just cause, particularly the one of the musculature, the bifem short head, causing some rotation of the feet. So it does start to play around with things a bit. Have a hunt around. We've also got the opportunity to hit a little bit of the adductor magnus, which is a big slug of the muscle, sits in the adductor complex, but it's, it attaches quite high up onto the, onto the bottom of the pelvis. Um, so getting right up onto just underneath your sitting bones in there, have a hunt around and see if you can get into some of that junk because again, that one can play a little bit of havoc and it's a bit of a, it can be pretty uncomfortable. Take it steady. If you ever feel any tingling or numbness in any of these exercises, a self-massage, you're rolling a nerve, so just move off that. But again, try and relax, work through some positions and try and improve that range of movement. Next up is the quads and the IT band. Now we're not gonna get into too much detail on this one just to keep it simple, but we've got a lot of musculature around the thigh. We need to get it loosened off and moving well because it can start to play around and cause havoc with the pelvis. So Jacko gets the uh, foam roller and aiming for this top portion of the quad. Now, because we've got a lot of musculature in there, it runs on the front and the side, but we're looking to work down the front of the muscle here and then onto the side. What we've got in there is the IT band and the quad musculature, the four muscles that make that up. And we want to be able to start to separate them out. They get stuck together, it stops them from moving. So rolling around from side to side is gonna to help to loosen some of that stuff off. You're not gonna to have to go far until you find the trigger points and the sore bits that are in there. Jacko is going to level two to advance this a bit by finding one of those trigger points, holding it against the foam roll and then starting to move the foot in and out of this position as well. And it's just starting to drag that tension through um, the point of contact with the foam roller and loosen everything off. So hunt around, find the saw bits. Again, you've always got an extra level if you want it. You can find a little friend to help you. Explore it, find where you're, where you're sore and then spend some time working out that tension. We're going to focus on a active quad and hip mobilization in this position where we're going to be working in and out of two different positions but we're going to allow us to focus on teaching ourselves and the brain this relationship between the glutes and the hip flex and if the hip flexors are super tight how they're going to inhibit our ability to actually activate through the glutes so tim goes into a position first where he's kneeling on the floor knee is directly underneath the hip He's um, squeezing the glute and trying to tuck the pelvis underneath and he's going to feel a stretch at the front there. There's no point in him arching his back here. He's not going to feel it and shifting his hips forward. What he's got to try to do is tuck underneath. He's going to squeeze his bum. He can check it, touch test to check that it's on. It should feel nice and tight. And that's him in the position there. That's position one. He's going to hold and squeeze and make sure that's active there and feel that relationship between the hip flexor and the glute. Then he's going to adjust that front leg hands come down he pushes the knee out to the side and then he's going to drop the hip in and then he's going to do the same thing so the hip flex is now on a stretch in here we're slightly lower down he makes sure he's squeezing that glute still in that position and he can just hunt around and explore what's happening on the hip on the other side if we're wanting to increase the length or range of motion that we've got through this hamstring musculature it's important that we're not only taking some of the tension out like we did in the self myofascial release work you did with the ball on the box but we're also taking this actively through some range. So we're gonna look at this supine, which just means on your back, 90-90 hamstring stretch. First thing is getting a nice body line. There's no point in him, Tim being in this position and arching his back 
and when he takes one lay up to 90 degrees, the other leg must stay flat onto the floor. There's no point in us having a bend in here because then we're just losing control of the hip. So that one is splinting, back stays nice and flat. Femur goes, your leg goes straight up uh, vertical in the air, so we've got that 90 degree angle at the hip. Opposite arm goes across and grabs hold of the hamstring behind the back of the knee there. That's gonna stop the leg from falling out to the side and keep this uh, leg in a straight position. If we've got good range of motion, we should be able to go up to the top and create a nice straight line where you've got a completely uh, 90 degree angle going vertically up towards the sky. It's an active position, so Tim is squeezing the quad and he pauses for two seconds at the top, under control and comes back down. If he really wants to crank this up a little time, when he gets to the top, he can also bring the toe in. And if he pulls the toe towards him, trying to create some of that dorsiflexion, we get the calf involved there. And then we're working some of gastro, which crosses over the knee. We're getting that calf hamstring complex where a lot of us will be tight behind the back of there. If that starts to feel really good, can you get the leg right up close to the chest or progressively close to the chest and then go to stretch? You'll see that that's an extreme position, so it's gonna be super hard to get completely straight there, but it's gonna target the hamstring a little bit more. And if, for those of you that have already got decent range and are looking to do some of your, um, anything for your pistol squats, but if you're looking for your press to handstand and things like that, anything that requires you to have really good range of motion of the hamstring, we need to be increasing the ranges that we can actively go through and control ourselves. In this, we're going to look at some floor bridge progressions. And what's going to be important here is making sure we're cueing to use the glutes correctly in this position. That's going to help stabilize the pelvis. So Tim's starting in dead lying on the floor, but we're going to wake him up and he's going to bring his, bend his knees. And he's going to put his feet down by his bum and just check his distance with. He should just be able to touch with his fingertips. That's him nice and set. One of the things that some people get an issue with uh, with the floor bridge is that they're, they'll feel like their hamstrings cramp on because they're trying to do all the work and it's not the glute, they're not actually getting the glute firing first. And that's often because of the position to get the pelvis in. We want the pelvis starting in this nice neutral position. We don't want a big arch underneath, but equally we don't want to tuck under so much that the glute is just fired on and then the hamstring just has to do all the work. So he's trying to find that nice neutral position. And then from there, so he's got a little, just a, there's a, a soft sort of curve to the spine in a neutral. Core is then on engaged to maintain that position. Then the job is driving down through the heels to raise the hip up nice and high. He gets up and he maintains a nice straight line with the body, not arching. It's not about trying to get as high as you can because all you're going to do is pop that rib cage up. It's about making sure you're making that connection to the glutes and you should be able to check that they're on nice and strong. So it's a nice control uh, up to the top, pause, and then slowly back down, making sure we just kiss the floor before we drive up again. When that starts to get easy, the job is then to try and go with a single leg. In with a single leg, the, uh, Tim straightens this one out, and the job is that the whole thing is gonna raise at the same time. So the cue on the other side is exactly the same. The pelvis stays straight, it doesn't drop down to one side, and this leg is staying in a nice straight line, and the bum and the heel touch when it comes down to the floor exactly at the same time. You'll see that he's maintaining that top position when he pauses at the top, the two thighs are parallel to each other and the hip is staying straight. It's not dropping down to one side because he's got the strength in that glute that's working on the leg that is connected to the floor and that is gonna stabilize the pelvis and put your glutes in some great shape to helping you control the pelvis. The arabesque is a single leg balance exercise, but it's gonna to start to lengthen the hamstring and then start to also incorporate the glute work to come back up. But the whole time we're gonna be challenging our balance because we are gonna be on one leg trying to look like a ballerina. So my ballerina, Tim, is gonna come forward. He's gonna go onto his left leg. He takes his arms out to the side, makes a nice straight body line to start with. As he uh, does a soft little bend in this knee that he's standing on, so it just doesn't want it locked out, soft little bend, and then he's gonna be pivoting down from the hip to create the movement to a position where the leg is out straight and we're trying to create this nice flat line the leg a tiny bit high. There we go, nice flat line with the body. And then on the way back up, he's driving the glute forward, trying to feel like he's cracking a walnut between his butt cheeks. So on the way down, he's gonna feel a stretch, keeping that soft bend in the knee and the hamstring. And then on the way up, he drives from glute to push on back through, making sure he's maintaining a good body line throughout. What's gonna be difficult is you might feel like you're losing your balance sometimes. So you've got to make sure you are controlling that. Other things that go wrong is we don't actually get this glute on high, uh, strong enough on the leg that's out and it stays nice and low. Or you might find that you arch your chest up and you lift up and you sort of go into this scorpion type position where you're not holding and maintaining that good body line. So Tim's going to finish with one nice good one where he's nice and super straight in that position. Get the breakfast off that table and then he's driving with the glute on the way back up. Final point just to mention is 
just this knee position so you can see from front on. As he goes down, he's wanting to maintain the position where the knee stays in line with the toe. We don't want to see him diving inwards onto the inside and, and creating that uh, lateral movement of the knee. We want to stay hip, knee, and, uh, and toe in a nice straight line as he's going down. He's controlling it the whole time. It's difficult because we're on one leg, but you're going to actually build up more and more control and stability around that hip, knee, and ankle joint as you build up that control and as you get a bit better at being able to maintain your position on one leg. Hope your hamstrings are feeling better, feeling looser, and your hips in general are hopefully going to be feeling a bit better as well after that. If you uh, liked that content, it's some of those video tutorials are taken from our virtual classroom where we've got a whole class dedicated to improving your lower body foundation work. It's not just about improving squat patterns or running mechanics. All this is going to feed into longer term progression around your calisthenics training. So have a look. We've got so much content in there. If you want to learn calisthenics, I would say it's the best place to go and do it. So if you want to get into the virtual classroom, you can click in one of these bits. One of them will have decided to put it and there it will be there. And you'll be able to kick it or take it straight there. Let's move on. We'll see you in there. Class dismissed.